be worried about that. Uh, you know, I, 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 where is this document? Would you email it to me later or things like that? No, nothing of that sort. So let me just uh, start this. Okay, good stuff. That's on. Now, what you see on my side as of now is a browser uh, on which I've opened up uh, the learning platform, which is Moodle. But what I'm going to do is start from the website. And let me drop a quick, uh, you know, bit of um, a small agenda for us for our discussion. So, and I'll magnify this so that you're able to see it clearly. Yes. So let me show that to you now, and we'll drop a brief working agenda so that we know exactly what we're going to discuss and uh, what things have we covered. So let me just uh, share that with you. Okay, so first of all, thank you for choosing UK University to study. So um, what we're going to do today in the induction and enrollment session, is cover you know some of these areas related to your course. So first of all, I'm going to start by showing you some systems. Although you have got the logins for Moodle, but what I want to do is basically just make you aware of the systems that you're going to be using when you are actually studying with us. So there are four in particular um, that I want to essentially show and mention. And they are going to be just uh, showing you where you can find what bit of information. So it's easier for you to uh, you know, look for information if required uh, at any given point in time. After this the short demo is over, I'm going to go into what is called a course overview. And in course overview, I'm going to discuss the units, the, uh, you know, the uh, course content, um, how the unit is going to be, how the course is going to be de delivered. So we're going to discuss a bit of a study plan. I would like to know what days and time you can attend lectures with us. And there'll be some discussion around things like Harvard referencing, uh, you know, things like command verbs. And I'm going to show you some of the bits and ask you to read some of the bits after the session, just to get a uh, let's say a bit of detailed idea of what these things would involve. Then I'm going to go into what is called assessment and feedback process. Now, the reason of assessment and feedback process is at some stage, there are no exams in this particular qualification. So you're going to submit study six modules or units with us, submit six assignments because one unit has one assignment, but the process through which we take you through in terms of submission of assignment, writing the assignment first, then submitting the assignment, then we do marking and checking, and then ensure that you are passing the work. Uh, there's a process that we follow. We will send you some feedback so that you have it for your records and you are able to you know, have proof that this is something I've studied and I've uh, you know, achieved this particular unit. And then the certification process will happen. I'll also sure. introduce you briefly to the team. And that would include two, three key people. So I have one of my colleagues called Miss Jeel. I have one of my colleagues called Mr. Aman, uh, Amandeep. And then I have, these are people who you are going to be in touch with almost on a weekly, fortnightly basis. Then the tutorial team or the tutors team essentially, which will include Anjum, Sanjay. Um, we will have Yasser, uh, Shazia and myself. And then there is a quality team, which primarily you might not, maybe get to interact that much, but they will look after your certification and you know the process of, say for example, academic reference or uh, anything to do with uh, you know progression and things like that. So that would be the case. And then we have one or two people who are in administration and they would be maybe getting in touch with you from time to time. And they would include, uh, you know, they might want to get in touch with you because they, uh, you have asked for some information or you are primarily not able to get hold of something. So there are these bits that I will do, which is introduction to the team. And last but not the least, what I'm going to do is ask and encourage you to ask me lots of questions. So anything that you are not sure of, anything that you do not feel uh, confident about or you do not have information about, feel free to ask me, stop me there and then. And that would allow me to ensure that you get the information which is required, at least from a point of view of reference today, so that you know who you can write to and how you can write to. 
one of the things which I will briefly mention, if you have to write to anybody in UK University, anybody, it is going to be very easy. First name followed by ukversity.co.uk. It's as simple as that. So you don't need to memorize any emails. You don't need to look at, uh, you know, finding out who, what your email is and what, what uh, somebody's contact details are. If you, for example, need to write to Anjum, it will be Anjum at University, Sanjay at University, Yasir, Raman, Amrita, Philip, you know, it's that simple. Now, one last thing before I uh, also, uh, you know, mention and start, we are also looking at, um, you know, because we are set up like a mini university and we are teaching and delivering everything through online route, distance learning, we have cutting edge systems in place. So when I say cutting edge systems, you'd probably not see some of these systems even with universities or they have versions of it which are older, but we are probably using the top notch or the highest or the best versions. The reason I say this is we don't have a case in point wherein you send us an email and the email is not received or the email disappears. You send us an e we send you an email, we exactly know whether you've deleted it, you've read it, you've skimmed it, you opened it on phone, how many times you opened it, what how many times you come to the website, how many times you've opened the system, what you've downloaded, we can see everything on our side. And yeah. this is not for policing. This is to ensure that none of your communication that you do with us ever gets missed by anybody in the team. So we are a small team of 13 people here but this 13 people team handles about 2000 students. And we are never more than two hours away in terms of response time when you send us an email or send us a WhatsApp and you will get a response pretty much straight away. Everybody is based in the UK, nobody is outside. So we are not one of those colleges where in the operations is somewhere else or uh, somebody somewhere else, everything is coming from here itself. And I think that's one of the reasons why we pride ourselves that we are a British company, we are a British uh, we are actually wavering the British education banner abroad. And that is one of the reasons why a lot of people study with us as against options that you would have also had in, you know, in your local place like Qatar. I know there are two, three academies which can offer similar courses, but you're studying with us is because of the quality and the, you know, nature in terms of how we teach and deliver the courses. Yeah, so you yeah. get to see this in working. So that is all I will look at covering and I will look at covering them in parts and you are, you know, feel free to ask me questions and queries if you have anything, because there's nothing like a good question or a bad question or a simple question or a difficult one. Just ask me so that we are able to give you information and transparency and you're happy with, and you know what you're, uh, you know, where you're studying and who you're studying with and everything should be available from that point of view. So I'm going to switch you over to the site and we'll keep coming back to this agenda off and on. Now, the reason I'm starting with the um, college website is because this is the place where you'll be able to get to everything uh, or use everything. So I've just, uh, you know, kind of, um, let's say, um, you know, magnified this slightly. And the reason I've done that is because I want to make sure that you're able to see everything clearly. I'm going to be logging in as an administrator to show you some of the things so that they are, I can show you everything inside out. Now, the website on the top itself, you're able to get to everywhere that you need to on as far as platforms are concerned. So if you need to reach us, that's the number. It's an out of hours number as well, 24 seven, it's available and you can text us, message us. If you click on WhatsApp, it'll open your WhatsApp and it'll allow you to send us a message on this. This is a monitored mailbox admin at UKversity. So if you send an email even in the middle of the night, forget the time zones, you'll get a response in one to two hours from us. Simply because there are four or five people which manage this. And depending on, you know, sometimes you have, it's a human nature. When you're doing something and if you get stuck, you want an answer there and then. So that's the approach that we follow to ensure that nobody gets to wait and work through a standard routine. If you have a need, you have a desire and you want or you're getting stuck, we will make sure that you are able to, you know, start from there. And this is the link to our platform. So if you click on this, it will take you to Moodle. And that would be essentially something that we will show you a quick demo of as well at a later time. And then the other platform that you would also use from time to time is YouTube. And the reason we put YouTube is because 
we are we are delivering lots of sessions every day and uh, in order for storage to happen and these sessions to happen you know i think youtube is a great place we can put everything over we're not paying any cost to it and your lectures would generally be available under the playlist of business and management so if i click on playlist on the top and i go into business essentially what you are then going to be able to see is all the lectures that are ever done on business and management side of things available here uh, a lot of them we have put in the open domain what a lot of them would essentially be available only to uh, people who are either subscribers or people who are essentially you know studying students with us so there are in excess of 2500 lectures that we have kept out in open and you'd be able to see them and go through them should you wish to study proactively on your own and uh, you know see lectures and delivery from different uh, you know people within the organization so they are quite neatly labeled but this is something you don't need to worry about only thing that i want to show here is that while you are studying with us if you go and click on the subscribe button because i'm signed in so it, there should be a subscribe button here click on it so that if you upload a new lecture or video on business and management course that you are doing you will get a email or a link to say uh, you know this is a new lecture which has been added and you are able to then go in and see that particular lecture now one of the platforms that you are going to be using uh, with us while you are studying is zoom like you are using now so there is not much to demonstrate we have had no issues in you being able to log on to and get to zoom and this session sometimes in middle east some providers block it and you have to be outside the vpn so we have not had any of such issues every time what will happen is you'll get an invite and that invite will essentially uh, allow you to click and you should be able to get on to the zoom meeting or the lecture with the lecturer uh, by just clicking on that link so these are the four five different platforms that you're going to be using moodle mm. youtube zoom and our website now if you wish sometimes as you mentioned you're going to be traveling sometimes if you're traveling you can also have your whole course go with you on your phone so there's an app that you can download which is given on the home page of moodle and if you go to the home page and you scroll down this is the place where this app is and you can actually download this particular app free uh, depending on which platform uh, you are on do you use an iphone or do you use an android android okay so from the google play store you should be able to download this particular app and i'll play this quick five uh, 30 second video which will allow you to understand how to you know install this particular um, application on your site so this particular app when you download is called the moodle app and this is an app which is primarily from the company itself which has developed moodle there are lots of free apps don't download any of the free app go for this app only which is the moodle app and this when you set up will ask you for three things when you are trying to set up so it is going to ask for what is the url or the web address at which this installation is the moodle installation is so that is called the url you will need to type that in and you know your username and you also know your password once you put it once and save it then you would not need to type this again and again because the app is on your phone and the phone will save this and every time you click on like a widget it will launch that app and it will give you access to the full course material the uh, only so thing that you have to bear in mind is that obviously yes because it's a smaller screen everything is going to be resized to this screen so your lectures your presentation slides that you open up or you look at your recordings everything is going to come on a small screen size now this is not mandatory but the advantage for us is that if you have this app on your uh, phone then we can send you notifications because there are push notifications allowed on the cell phone so i can send you messages i can share my calendar and you can get reminders you know by, because this app would allow it you can disable them obviously by going into the settings option and disable notifications but generally speaking this would be useful because uh, you would have access to your course material anywhere you travel in the world uh, wherever you have access to the internet so sometimes we are traveling and you can download the course material on your phone depending on how much capacity you have on your phone itself 
And that would allow you to also say, for example, if you're taking a flight, it's a three hour flight, you want to listen into a lecture, put your headphones in, you're able to download the entire course and have it on this, and you're able to go through it as well. So this app is something that you can set up uh, by having three things at your end. And these three things would typically include uh, these areas, these three. So that means you need to know where the URL is and your username in small letters always. It is always in small letters and your password is case sensitive, whatever you have kept. If you want to change it, I've sent you the procedure to how to change the password as well. And that could be done in uh, again on the system pretty quickly. Now, if you ever forget your username and password, it's a very simple way of resetting it by clicking on this option, forget your username and password. And what it will allow you to do is either put your username or put your email address. And the system will straight away send you an email uh, with an instant link to reset it. So this is something which is controlled <clears throat> from the system. You don't need to wait for any administrator or IT person to help you. It's just a very simple case of how quickly the system sends a link back for you to be able to log in. Now, in terms of the system itself, if I click and if I log in now uh, by putting my username and uh, you know password, when you are on the home page, you will see one course that you are enrolled in, and it will show up as a tile here. Now, in my case, because I'm logged in as the administrator. The other option to navigate into the courses, because we offer about 103 or 104 courses, <clears throat> what you'll also be able to do is go into the business tab and from there drop down and choose OTHM level six diploma in business management. And this will open up the entire course that you are able to see on your side. Today's course and induction, we are actually focused on, you know, this part, which is, which is what I'm going to cover with you in the induction session. So this part here that you see is what I'm looking at covering today uh, with you now. And we'll go into details of this as we go along in the uh, discussion. So let me show you this. <coughs> so this part is what we are looking at going into for the process of our induction. Is that okay? Yes. Now, the bit which I missed, I think didn't share the screen with you was with regards to when you have to do a reset on your username or password. So that typically tends to be here on the top. So if I just sign out for a minute and log back in again, So I'm on the home page right now. You will see one course on your side when you log in, which is the course that you're enrolled in. And you click enter on that and that will take you into the course. But on the other way of entering the course would be when you log in. And then you go to the business tab on the top and then choose your level six diploma in business management from the top. And that will take you into the course. Is that okay? Now, there are six modules that you're going to cover. So they are displayed as table of content does not mean that there is no material in this, but what happens is when you click on any of the headings, it will open up the full course for you or that particular content in the unit, it will open up. So leadership and management is the first unit and the way the material is organized in this course uh, or on the Moodle page, I will take you through it as well so that you know, this is how exactly how the material will be available on all the units that you go to. So if I, now one, one thing which I, before I go into this, if you want to go back to the home page, there are what are called breadcrumbs on the top in terms of menus here, this. So if I want to go into the unit, I click on a particular unit, for example, this one. And from here, if I want to go back and forth in the unit, the navigation will move to the bottom. So it's left or right. But if I want to go back to the home page and see it like a table of contents, like you read a book, you go onto the top and you click the level before this and it will show you the whole course again. 
Okay. Now, yes. how is the material arranged in any of the uh, units? Let me randomly pick up one unit. So if I go into, say, strategic human resource management, the first, there are going to be three or four types of documents. One type of document is going to be PDFs. The reason of PDF is because on the phone, they are uh, responsive and you can actually see everything in a small screen. If I open this up in a bigger screen, it will become big. If I open it in a small screen, it will become small. And the font sizes actually do not change. But in a Word document, things would change. That is why they are on PDF. Yes. Now, the second type of documents that you're going to look at are going to be documents which are going to be uh, cloud documents, which is going to be recordings, per, basically. So when I click on the recording, it will open a recording for that particular right. session, right. Well, which has happened. Recording. And this will be a recording of the lecture. The third type of documents in some units you will see are going to be Microsoft documents, a PowerPoint, a Word document, or an Excel spreadsheet, because we want you to download them and they are going to be templates that you're going to use to actually submit some assignments or do some activities. Now, how uh, we, yeah, here uh, I want to say something which you are talking about this uh, uh, recording session, but yes. I try to open this uh, session, but uh, it's uh, showing the message that uh, the video is not exist. Okay, so in some cases, when you look at clicking on some of the videos, sometimes what, what is going to happen is this is a web file format, but in some cases like on Google Android or Chrome browsers, what will happen is it will show the, it will actually open it up, but it will not render it because of the browser. So in most cases, that problem should not be there. But if you do get this as an error, so for example, if I want to open one up, I'll open two, three up, which are here. So what I've done is I put a control tab and I've opened up all of them simultaneously. Well, now be recording. Yeah. So as you can see, they will all be working. Yeah, but it's uh, not working with me. That's why I asked this question. Because I try uh, to open this one. So what we are going to do in this case would be to basically, if you find any of this uh, link not working, this is a good question that you asked, but sometimes, you know, depending on the browser and the version of the browser you're using, if they are not working for some reason, then one of the things that you can do in, in terms of getting hold of that recording is to email one of my colleagues and he will be able to send that to you, Amandeep. <clears throat> so he is going to be one of the persons who's going to be, you know, in regular touch with you. And what he normally does is if a session has happened, like I'm doing the session now, after this session is over, the recording of the session, he's going to email that to you on the email, a link of that recording so that you have it. If it is not working on the module, you still have it on the email and the email recording will come from YouTube. So YouTube should 100% work because if yeah. you're not able to work on YouTube, that means something is wrong with the machine or the browser because if you're not able to browse YouTube, which is on the web, then I can understand there's an issue. But if it is on the system, then also we will send you this through the email. So if you need any recordings which are not working, the links of the same can be emailed to you by Aman. Is that okay? No, okay. It's good. So Absolutely. anything which is not working, you ask for it. Can I get recordings of LO1, LO2, LO3, LO4? And I'll tell you what is LO1, LO3, LO4. It is yeah. learning outcomes. So they would be straight away sent to you by Aman. Now, okay. <clears throat> when I look at how the content of the system is arranged, you know, first document that you're going to see in any, you know, case, any unit, if I take one particular unit, is always going to be, you know, first few documents are always going to be, first document that I click on is going to be what is called unit specification. This is something that is given to us and it is extracted from the course handbook, which you are also going to have access to. And this will tell us what is to be taught in the unit. So we cannot just teach you anything. So a body body gives us this content for tutors and lecturers to say that this unit like sustainable business practices has this particular content to be covered. So the content is broken down into learning outcomes, 
and assessment criteria. So this unit has three learning outcomes, as you can see, right? And in each learning outcome, there are three assessment or some have two assessment criteria. Now, what does this cover? When I say global sustainability agenda, this is given here. This is what we are going to teach you in the first presentation of the unit. Yeah. Second presentation will cover this. Third presentation will cover this. And in some cases, if there's common content, they've asked us to cover this across in those lectures. Now, if I go back, what you're going to see is if this uh, unit, if I open it separately, this unit has three learning outcomes. What we'll have is three presentations to cover the assessment criteria of the unit. So the first one talks about, you know, evaluating. Are you, uh, sorry, uh, are you sharing screen with me, uh, which you are talking about units? Yes, definitely. Uh, but uh, I'm not uh, seeing okay. here. Can you see this no. now? No, 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 I can see. Okay, yeah. great. So what has happened is if I look at the unit in terms of how they are arranged, the first part, first few documents, most important part will be what is called the unit specification, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. And if I open this up, this is the unit specification. Okay. So it has three learning outcomes. And you will, we will cover this unit in four lectures. So three mm -hmm. for the learning outcomes and mm -hmm. one for assignment discussion session. So mm -hmm. this unit we will study in about four weeks. Okay. Right? Some units have four learning outcomes. Some have five learning outcomes. So if I take into, let's go into financial decision making. And in this unit, if I look at the unit specification, as you can see, there are four learning outcomes here. Yes. So we are going to cover one lecture for one learning outcomes. So this unit we are going to study in five weeks. Now, what do we cover in the learning outcomes? We cover this content, which has been given by the awarding body. This is learning outcome content. This is learning outcome two and three. This is learning outcome one and three. And this is four. We can't just teach you anything. So the presentations that we make are based on this content to be covered in detail. So if I go back and I look at learning outcome one presentation, if I open it here, you would see that this presentation will cover everything which has been discussed in terms of the learning content for that unit. We'll start with different types of organization, go into <clears throat> details of major legislations, major types, and then go into you know, some of the assessment criteria, what are required to be covered. Okay, if I show you any other unit, for example, this is sustainable business practices, if I look at the first presentation, sustainable business practice covers learning outcome one. This is the, uh, we'll start with some key terminology, importance, then go into assessment criteria, one by one. Yes. So we cover everything in detail, right? Our presentation slides are very worded because unlike when you work in the company, we have always learned in trainings, don't put more than five bullet points, not more than 30 words. But because we know that most of our learners are mature learners, they study from our slides. So these slides that we have created are created from books and they are very detailed so that you get 70 to 80% of the knowledge required for that unit from the slides itself. So they are quite detailed and this is what will be covered in the lecture. So we are not reading from the slides. But if I'm teaching this particular unit, I'll talk about sustainability, factors which affect sustainability for a company, things like corporate social responsibility, water sustainability, you know, recycling, uh, you're looking at sending materials to landfill, the triple bottom line concept. So I'm going to be talking about what is required to be studied in the first learning outcome. And I will give examples and I will take you through the theoretical parts in detail so that you know exactly what we have studied and what is required in this particular presentation. So this particular format will be covered and will be the same all across. When we look at presentations and we look at theoretical frameworks and any material that you accept, uh, you know, expect to learn from on that unit. And it will cover all the details which are mentioned here. Is that okay? Yes. Now, other documents that we'll have, just briefly going back to one unit so that uh, you know, you're able to understand. The other documents will be recommended books. 
So if I just go back into this particular document of uh, recommended books, these are the recommended books by the awarding body. So we are not going to give you any books, just any books. We are going to provide at least one or two, or in some cases, three of the recommended books that are required for studying this particular unit. So if I see and open these books, these are traditional academic books that you would get from the library, buy from Amazon. And they, because we are delivering it online, they are all integrated into your system. Now, these are extensive books, six, 700 pages long, just like academic books are. If you're looking at studying in detail, we will tell you what chapters are to be studied, which are related to the content of the unit. And we'll, in some cases, tell you the pages as well. Because, you yes. know, if you were studying this course with me for two years or three years, you'll probably go through this thoroughly. But because I'm a teacher and I've used these books to create presentations, I know exactly everything in the book, where it is and how to find it. Yeah, yeah. These are the bits that we have integrated into the course for every unit. It is not just one unit. Now, in some cases, we have bought all the books because... The awarding body content is going here, there, up, down, everywhere. And we can't find that information. And that is where they've recommended four books. So over the years, we have taught this course maybe 50, 60, 70 times. And what we've done is we've chosen the best books from the recommended list so that it meets and covers all this criteria. Okay. Yes. Now, when we look at the books, after that, what we've also done is we've given you what is called the assignment, which everybody is going to attempt when they complete the unit. And once the lecture is over, we are going to do a detailed discussion on the assignment as well to tell you how to go about completing and uh, you know making this assignment, yes. putting it together literally. So this is the assignment brief that you will find on all the units, and it will always be ending with the word assignment. For every unit, there's an assignment brief. Now, for you to understand how the assignment has to be done, we've also created what is called a sampler assignment for you to look at. Because, you know, let's face it, for some of us, it is back to school. We need to know how assignment looks like. How do we do it? So we have also provided a sampler assignment for you to look at. So this unit, you will be required to produce two files. One will be a Word document and one will be a PowerPoint presentation. And OTHM's point is it beautifully explains what is the output required to pass this unit. So if I go into the end of it, as you can see after the scenario, they've said part one of your task is presentation and task two is essentially a Word document or a report. So the output to pass this unit would be a presentation of few slides with 300 words as speaker notes, and about 1200 word report, word document to complete this assignment, to pass this unit. So you're looking at about two, and a half, two to two and a half thousand maximum words to be able to write this particular assignment. Now, what we have done in order to ensure that you have a good idea, we have created task one as a sampler, which I showed you. And then task two also as a sample is available for you to look at how this would be done if you were to submit this assignment. Is that okay? Yes. So if you see in terms of how the material will be laid out, it will have eBooks, it will have the assignment brief, it will have the unit specification, it will have presentations for each of the unit, a sampler assignment. And in some units, as you would also see, there'll be additional documents which I think are going to be summarized handouts that we have created for you to be able to study them in a bit more detail. So for example, in this case, like strategic management, we've also provided a research article on HRM theories because there are 21 different theories in HRM. You can read six books of it, but best would be to read an article which summarizes them in brief filtered detail and as a case study, we are going to go through this to understand these models, HRM models, right? And that's where you'll have lots of these articles that we will plant as we go along and teach and deliver these modules. They will be additional reading and knowledge for you to look at getting the trucks and the filtered summary of what is required from the unit. 
Is that okay? So if I yes. just take this back right now and go back to the uh, module overview, all the units are arranged in that fashion. Now, you would sometimes see a yellow colored outline or a box outside a particular unit. What is that going to show? That is going to show that this is the current module which is being delivered for which you have you should have session invites. And for this module, you should be looking at maybe joining live sessions because the, we are teaching this unit nowadays. And this box will move around the units. And as you would see, there are no connected units that you have to start with one, two, three. You will start with one unit, say four, go to five, go to six, or study two, and then go to one, but complete the full course. Is that okay? Yeah, so yeah. That is the system to talk in terms general about the various systems that you're going to be using as far as the uh, you know course is concerned. Is that okay? Yes. Any questions on this? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, I want to know about this one. When mm -hmm. we will start the first unit, like uh, uh, which uh, uh, can you show on the screen? Uh, this one unit. So we are going to look at drawing up a schedule maybe later towards the end of the session. And that would essentially be looking at, uh, you know, talking to you which unit we are going to start. Yeah, I don't yeah. know as of now at the moment because I'll have to check with Jill and Jill will inform what is the schedule and you will get that schedule by close of play today after the session. Okay, okay. So yeah. it's mean which unit you will decide uh, that will be ongoing and uh, the video session will be accordingly. That is correct. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But we are not going to start you off in the middle of the unit. We are going to start off with a new unit. So you are not starting. Yeah that I've missed one or I have to catch up with this one. No, we're going to start yeah, yeah. a new unit with you. That's yeah, why that I... will. Yeah, that is a good. That's good. That will be good for me because I will understand uh, all the circumstances. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Just give me one second. Okay. I got I so I was just checking, we are going to start off with unit one and that will be leadership and people management. Yes. Now, while I'm at that quick question, uh, which I want to check with you, is you, you had mentioned um, to me what days are going to be more suitable for you for attending these lectures. Yeah, actually, uh, Friday and Saturday, as I spoke uh, previously, Yeah. Uh, these two days are off days. Off so, day, okay. Yeah, yeah. So... Right. And in terms of times? Uh, Friday and Saturday, any time which you will suggest, I can uh, manage. But if you want to move some other days, then uh, after uh, 7, uh, this one like uh, Qatar time, after 7, you can start PM. Okay. So what we'll do is we will start with Sat uh, Sunday you can't do. Because, you know, I know in Middle East right now, UAE is following one trend wherein they've started to give weekends off. But yes. in maybe some of the other places, it's still Friday, Saturday is off. Yeah. Let me yes. give me one second. Yeah. So if you look at Friday 3 p.m., would that work for you? Because time in Qatar right now. So your time in Qatar right now is uh, 7.19. We are at 5. So two hour difference is there right now. Yes, yes. Sir. So two hour difference is there right now. So what we would want to do is basically look at, um, okay, that's fine. So we will fix.
And then Saturday, what I'm going to do is uh, basically keep the same time, 3 p.m. And that would mean that you are doing 3 p.m. UK time. So that will be 5 p.m. Friday, your time, and Saturday, 5 p.m. your time. Okay, it's uh, okay. sound good. That's good. Okay. So what we will do is basically schedule the first schedule, which we are going to start from tomorrow. And that will be basically, you know, Friday, Saturday. Uh, so you'll start with the new unit tomorrow, first session. And then next week onwards, it will be Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and we'll follow it through. Is okay. that okay? Yeah, yeah, no problem. It's uh, very okay. So that's done, and you should get the invites, you know, uh, in a couple of minutes after we complete the session. So tomorrow we will start with the first learning outcome to the unit, and then next week onwards it will be Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and that is the time that we'll keep rolling as far as sessions are concerned. Okay, so that is fine. Friday, 3 p.m. times would be 3 p.m. UK time. We'll have to do some adjustment with you, um, but I think it should be fine because when the clocks go back um, on 20, on 30th of September or so, I think 30th September, 25th October, uh, a couple of weeks away, but then the time difference will become three hours. But for now, it's okay for the next couple of weeks, six to eight weeks. Yes. Now, so that bit is okay. Now, apart from that, while I'm at it, the other bit which I would suggest you to do is when you are looking at uh, taking the live lectures, and certain amount of time that I would suggest that you need to keep aside. I would say in terms of self-study, you know, after taking the lectures, I would suggest that you have at least two to three hours available, you know, per week for a bit of self-study. Yes. The reason I say this is because you're looking at doing this maybe in a bit of a faster pace. And the second thing is that when we teach and deliver, everything remains fresh because you're in the session, you're talking and you're discussing. Yes. But at some stage, what we will happen, what will start happening is the tasks which are given in the assignment. My session would be to start doing some draft of it at your end when you attend the lecture. So you know exactly what is covered and what the task is about. And that, yeah. Will, towards, yeah, that will towards the end, by the time we finish the unit, you'll also have a draft document of your assignment. And that would mean you can finalize it in two, three hours, reference it, paraphrase it, and then start sending it for, uh, you know, marking and assessment as well. If you leave it for late, what will then happen is that you, either you'll forget, you need to go back to the recordings or start looking at presentations again. So two to three hours of reading that we will recommend, either it will be a website like Harvard Business Review, we'll ask you to watch a video on TED or TED Talks, or we will provide articles and journals which will be for additional reading. And if you read them, you will crystallize what has been discussed in theory during the session. You will know exactly this is theory and this is practice. Uh, drafting, you mean I can uh, note by pen? No, not by pen. Drafting, I mean, is you start creating a working document of Word document or PowerPoint presentation so that you start writing the assignment. That is what I mean. Okay, so I will, uh, after the lecture, I will start this drafting the assignment, what yes. I am going to get. Yes, yeah. So that you okay. keep collating the information which is required to write the assignment. Okay, okay. 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 Now, that bit is okay. So let's go back um, into our systems part. So systems part, I think we are uh, clear that you are aware of Zoom, which you are using. Moodle, you have access to. You know how the content is organized. And then last but not the least, uh, the website, and I would suggest that you bookmark the website. For example, if this is the website, you click on the lock and you bring it to the bookmark bar by dragging it so it is available to you as a shortcut. So if I ever want to go to the website, I have a shortcut available and that should allow me to get access to all the other bits at any given point in time quite quickly. Is that okay? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, what uh, what about bookmark? I couldn't understand this. Okay, what I'm saying is like, you know, sometimes we visit certain sites quite often. 
So yeah, what yeah. I have to do is rather than every time go on and open a new browser and type www UK University. So rather than typing it and wasting time, what you can do is you can go on to our website, click on the lock, and then drag it to your bookmark bar. So it becomes a favorite. Ah, okay, so okay. It, it'll straight away open. I don't need to type it. It's like a favorite. Okay. Got it? Yes, yes. Okay. Now let's look at uh, a bit of uh, you know a course overview in terms of what do we need to cover in the course overview. Now, the course overview. This is the course handbook, and parts of it we have already taken out and put into individual units. Now, this course handbook is useful because you can get some background about OTHM as a qualification, as an awarding body. If you need to refer to the course for any sort of verification. That's the off-call reference number of the qualification. Now, all qualifications which are 120 credits are one year long or are called as one year academic qualifications. You cannot get certification on this qualification before 15 weeks, however genius you are. So the minimum time frame that you have to spend is related to the guided learning hours that they suggest. So if you study two hours with us and you study two to three hours, you can do a quick calculation that if I study six hours a week, and if I divide that by 48, you know, uh, six eights are 48, I'd be looking at completing this qualification in about 80 weeks, which will be like one and a half year. If I spend, spend 10 hours, this is just an example. It's not to be taken literally, because, you know, I have work experience, you have work experience, you have lots of things that you already know, you do it this practice. So here are your cases to look at understanding the theory and relating to your work experience and then doing the assignment. So yeah. that is why when the qualifications have a lear guided learning hour, they are guided. That means there are guidance given for you to understand that this is how long it will take if you study yeah. the qualification thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? There is no grading in this. It's pass and fail. You will pass, of course, will not let you fail. And that is where the feedback and consultative approach comes in. So that we are able to give you idea in terms of what the assignment is, what the feedback is, and I will yes. talk about that in the feedback process. Yes, there are six yes. units, all are mandatory. Each unit is twenty credits, and you are going to study each of these units independently, so that you are able to complete and achieve the assignments and the units itself. There is only one assignment every unit. It's not multiple assignment. There is no exam. One assignment for each unit. Yes. Now after this, you can either go into a level seven diploma. Or you can decide uh, to, you know, basically do a uh, top of degree. But again, you have to have credit combination of, you know, level four and five diplomas and things like that. But generally, most learners after completing level six, do level seven and then go to do MBA after this program. So can I directly go after a MBA after this uh, level six? So after level six, if you want to go directly to MBA, you have to apply to a university come in a tier four license under as, as a student, and that would give you a 15 months course with the university, which is called pre-masters leading to MBA. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do it through distance learning, you'll have to study level seven, and level seven will take you to a top up for, for MBA, which will be a dissertation submission of three months only. Okay, okay. okay? Now, okay. we will assess and verify the entire course and the modules yes. and show you an example of assessments, how they are done. And the reason I would do this is because you have to pass all the units. There is no case of, uh, you know, I can't do this unit or I can't make this unit or I will, uh, you know, I have only done few tasks in this unit. No, you have to complete all the units and all the assignments to be able to get a diploma. <clears throat> so I will show you the assessment process as well in terms of how do we assess how do we give you feedback and how essentially your diploma looks like so just let me show you a full screen and i will pull a few things out so let me just uh, show you one or two things
I'm going to try and show you a level six uh, diploma in particular. Okay, so what I will do is uh, show you first uh, one or two things, which is uh, just about there. Okay, so let's go into the feedback process. So let me share my full screen with you now. Yeah. Now, what happens is when you submit an assignment, for example, this is a case in point wherein one of the learners has submitted an assignment. What will happen in the assignment is there is what is called an assignment cover sheet, which you are required to fill. This cover sheet essentially, you know, that's what I meant that you have to expand the document in Word. So this cover sheet will have your name, your registration number. You don't need to mention online. It will be mentioning your center number or center name. So courses for you. The qualification name, the unit specification uh, title, and the name and the word count and when you have submitted, just to show you an example. And then you'll you know, electronically sign that this is my own piece of work and uh, authentic and you know I've referenced the work material and the, there is no plagiarism in the work. Now, this sheet is something that you can download from here, which is front cover sheet given, is a word document here. So that you can fill it once, and keep changing the name of the unit and you don't need to fill everything again and again. So what will happen is you'll change the name of the unit, you'll write the word count and you'll probably submit, put the submission date and change the submission date here, but rest of the things remain the same. So this is available here for you to download and fill. Now, once you have actually made this cover sheet, you will submit the assignment. There is one research assignment in your case as well. And when it comes into us, what we do is we give feedback, which is, to say whether the work that you've submitted is meeting the criteria or not. So we will, the lecturer or the assessor will check and give comments on all the assessment criteria. right? When I say assessment criteria, so if I just go back into your course here briefly and open say one unit and look at the assignment brief, so what we are doing is we are basically checking all these 1.1 has been done, 1.2 has been done. And that is where commenting is done to ensure that the work is meeting the criteria. Now, if in some cases we do feel that the work that you have written, evidence that you provided is not meeting the criteria, then what will happen is we give you detailed feedback here to say that you have not included, for example, uh, in this case, research questions. So could you provide some research questions which you are going to use to collect data from your, uh, you know, from your participants for sampling? And we will tell you exactly what is to be done so that when you include this, this document goes back and forth between you and the assessor. And when you include these questions, assuming you had not done this earlier, but you include it, what then we recommend you to do is highlight it in yellow so that we know that this is the comment given and this is the additional work that you've added into the assignment to now make it meet the assessment criteria. Okay, now yeah. this commenting will not be visible to you if you open in your phone because the screen is small and you will see only a speech bubble. You will not be able to see the commenting. So it has yes. to be opened on a laptop or at a desktop or things like that. Now. Once you submit the assignment, we feel everything is meeting the criteria. What then happens in that case is that we are going to give you a judgment and a summary assessment sheet. This summary assessment sheet will, if I now share you just the summary assessment sheet, this is going to be a sheet like this. Now this sheet is going to tell you why you have passed this unit. And this is your record that now it says I have passed this unit, there are some comments and it is signed by the assessor. 
and this is something that you will keep for your record. This sheet, along with the feedback that you got on the Word document, will be your proof that you have actually studied this unit and completed it. That is the Word document with comments. Yeah, and that will be the evidence. Evidence, yes. yes. This mm -hmm. is what we will put forward towards the awarding body for certification. Yeah. Now, when we put your work for certification, we also put what is called, we do a plagiarism scan on Turnitin, and that also becomes a part and parcel of your document, as you can see here. So this is your assignment. And if I share the uh, full document with you in terms of how it is put forward for certification, you would see this is your plagiarism scan, which has also been done, which shows that this is an original document. There is 0% copy and paste in this document. This report also is submitted to the external examiner. Is that okay? Yes. So this will come back to you. So when you complete one unit, what are the three things that you're going to get back from us? First thing will be this document, which is called the assessment marking sheet. Second document that you're going to get is a plaque scan report, a plagiarism report because it is integrated into Moodle. So the report is generated by the system and you get this back for your own reference. Now, assuming this report shows 32% here. So what will happen? The course coordinator, Jill, will actually send this report to you and this report will have traffic light system, red, orange, and green. Anything which is green is fine. Anything which is orange is okay. But anything which is showing red will need to be paraphrased or referenced because that is exactly blatant copy of things that you've done from one uh, website or book or anything, and then you put it into your work. And that will give us the idea that this is plagiarized. So if some cases we find if it is going over 20%, then you are going to get this report back and that report will be given to you primarily to address and look at how to do away with the areas where you have to do paraphrasing to remove similarity. And the third document is going to be your report in which you have comments from the assessor to say that why you have passed the unit and how you have passed the unit. Is that okay? Yeah. So this part is basically the feedback and assessment process. Now, what happens in this case is, if you send me an assignment, I mark it, and I make, and I make, ask you to make some changes, you make the changes, you send it back to me, and I still feel that the assignment is not meeting the criteria. Now, we are not going to put another comment on it and send it back to you. What will happen is we'll set up a schedule, uh, a Zoom tutorial with you, for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, and we'll discuss verbally. And yeah, we'll, yeah. Because sometimes it's a case that I'm here and you are here. Or sometimes there's a case my expectation is here, but you are here. So what we have to do is tell you exactly where we are going wrong or where things are not being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's very uh, beneficial. Yeah. So talking face-to-face -face would help resolve that quickly rather than university style, no, take it back, do it again. No, we don't do all that. Yeah. So we'll straight away come back to the point to say, Let's do it this way. Now, the other thing that you have to look at is once the feedback and process is over and you have achieved the units, uh, all the six units, for example, then at some stage, what is going to happen is that we are going to start the process of your certification. And the certification process would mean that all the six units have been completed all your parts in terms of the assignment have been received and they are all meeting the criteria. And at some stage, once the visit happens, what will happen is we are going to issue the diploma and that diploma is going to look like this. So last month's, I'm just going to show you one random sample. So last month's diploma. So I'm again going to share my full screen because uh, the OTHM right now, you know, is following what is called um, a directive from the government of UK. Mm -hmm. And that directive is called the HEDD, Higher Education Digital D Database. So all universities, awarding bodies are being encouraged to actually not provide printed documents because of forgery and, you know, duplication. 
and uh, piracy, they are being asked to provide what is called electronic documents. Mm -hmm. Now, these electronic documents are easily verified by, by employers, by everybody. Should you need to order a printed version of the diploma, OTHM is going to issue you a login, which is going to be with you for life, just like university. This is our login. From this login, you can send a link to your employer. You can download the copy of your diploma. You can electronically verify it and you can do lots of other things. And this is something which will come to you when you, your certification has been released by OTHM. So make sure that you save an email from OTHM, which comes and that will give you the log logins to their digital portal. Okay, now what you see on the screen is there are there's an example of a diploma which OTHM issues. It's a two part thing. First part is going to be the diploma, which has the name of the qualification, your name awarded and all that. And the second part is basically your transcript, which shows, uh, you know, the uh, qualification and the uh, units that you've achieved. Is that okay? Yeah. So in all cases, all qualifications are being issued like this now. And what I do is, if I show you right now, because we are doing a video call, if I scan this barcode, which is on the diploma from my phone, it will straight away show me the verification on the OTHM website that this is an original diploma. So I don't need to wait or I don't need to do anything and it will straight away show me the copy of the diploma on the OTHM portal. Yeah. And this is useful for employers as well because this allows electronic verification to happen rather than me waiting and you know sending an email and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So once your assignments and everything is complete, certification normally takes, I would say seven to 10 working days to happen. And that would be the case in point in terms of how OTHM will issue the diploma. You will get an email automatically from them and obviously, we will tell you that the diplomas have been issued and you would be able to log into the system and obviously check and, you know, get a copy of that. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Now, on the bits that you need to, I would suggest that you need to look at. Now, in the UK education system, everything is referencing. We need to give credit to the author, publisher, inventor, uh, you know, scientist who has created this thing. So we follow what is called Harvard referencing system. So there is a presentation that we've created on Harvard referencing, which is basically, there are lots of different types of referencing system, but Harvard referencing system is also called author date style system. That means you write the name of the author followed by the year in which they invented or published that material. Again? Referencing can be done in two ways. It can be done through books, articles, and journals, or from electronic published resources like websites. Now, when you do referencing, there are two ways of doing it. One is you put direct quotes. That means I have to put the definition framework as it is into my work. And I have to do that by including them in what is called inverted commas. And if I read something, but I write it in my own words without changing the meaning of it, then this is called paraphrasing. Okay, so these are the two ways in which you can do referencing. And referencing can be done uh, in, uh, in this way, because if you have one author, you write the name followed by the year. If you have two authors, last name. If you have three authors, their last name. And if you have more than three, then you write and use the word et l. That means Morris and company, Morris and team. Now, sometimes when you refer to certain things and you bring it in your assignment, for example, if you mention four P's of marketing, which is price, place, product, positioning. Now, when you look at the definition of segmentation and four P's of marketing, you will have to write the definition as it is. Because even if I read it, I cannot paraphrase it. I cannot change it. So this was invented by Jeremy McCarthy. And in case, if I pick this up from say a particular book, from a specific page, and I'm quoting a specific paragraph, then sometimes you have to also write the uh, year and then also write the page number from which this definition is taken. And this is called in-text referencing. That means you are being very specific 
to the point of where this text has been taken from. And if I or somebody else who's reading your assignment has to verify, can actually go to that book and page and verify it. So this is how you do referencing. And this is explained in this presentation. There is also a video that we have. And when you publish bibliography or references list at the end of your document, you mention everything. So if it says Jerome McCarthy and Hatcher C in the year 1996, this is the name of the book, where it was published, name of the publisher, everything is mentioned. So if I get hold of this book and I go to page 56, I can see the definition of segmentation as defined by them. So this is a bit of reading that you will need to do to get yourself up to speed with referencing and how do you do referencing. If you want to visually see why referencing is required, there's a video that we have uploaded here. And this video is available on YouTube. You can play the video here as well. And in a couple of minutes, it will take you through the full process of how you do Harvard referencing. Is oh, actually, uh, yeah. my question is here, why this uh, referencing, referencing is uh, necessary in okay. this? Uh... It's a very good question. Two reasons. One is, when you're putting together assignments, what we have to do is we have to put together something which is going to be factual and accurate. I just cannot pluck anything from the air and then say, this is what it is as proof. You need to be able to justify, you need to be able to give a source of why this is the proof. So in that to happen, you have to go back to academic sources, which is where authors, scientists, publishers have actually uh, done research and then come out with that material. So that is why referencing has to be done. Now, if I look outside and if I say it's raining, how would you believe it is raining? Or if I say that it has been raining in Manchester for the last seven days, would you believe this? No. Or in some cases, you might have a doubt. How can it rain for seven days? So where will you go? You will go to the BBC weather website and check the weather and see whether it's been raining or how long it's been raining. And because I have put this in my assignment to say that this has been raining and I put BBC comma weather 2023, then you can actually check whether I'm correct or I'm wrong. And that mm -hmm. is where it helps build authenticity and factualness in terms of the, uh, you know, information I'm writing into my assignment. Oh, yeah, very nice. Now, the other thing. It is not necessary that I need to reference. That is also correct. So flip side of it. The second reason. Sometimes I can read a lot of things because I have knowledge, I have experience, and I can write them in my own words. That yeah. is amazing. So when we use the word referencing is when we are giving credit to somebody else who has created this work and I'm referencing it in my work. I'm bringing the exact mention of that in my own work, and that is where, because I'm giving credit to the author, I have to say that I'm referencing it. Now, if it was a case wherein I am actually reading it, and then I'm writing it in my own words, then towards the end, I still need to give credit, but I will create what is called bibliography. That is list of sources from which I've taken the information, but I've written it in my own words. So when you do your research as a research project, if you have to do a research where you go about collecting data, sampling and you know questionnaire and you speak to the participants, you give a bibliography because it is where you have gone in and done everything. Do you see the difference? Yes. Sir. So in your assignment, you could have some referencing and you could have some paraphrasing. But referencing would be required if I say, like, you know, Newton's laws, just talking as an example, that there's a third law of Newton, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Now, I have not discovered this. I have not proven this. Who has proven this? Newton. If I yeah. say nobody will believe. But at the moment in my statement, I write in brackets, Newton, comma, say 1690, people will believe that, yes, this was a law created by in physics by Newton and later on recognized in the... Uh, society of physical, uh, you know, physics. And that mm -hmm. is why it has become, and you are referencing it. It means you have credence and credit uh, given to the person who discovered it. And that is why referencing. Yeah. 
is that okay yeah but if i write uh, my research uh, like uh, could you explain it little more if i do something myself uh, or i observe something and i write in my words uh, so it will become in a uh, paraphrase yes so i'll show you exactly how you will need to do this so assume this was an assignment submitted by me okay yes and i wanted to give some background about covid here right so i'm going to put i've read something on the oecd website and i want to write something about covid as an introduction right so i will say covid 19 pandemic has devastated people globally there are over 20 million deaths reported across various countries now if i have to write this and i have to quote this figure that 20 million people have died i as an assessor can question how have you got this number 20 million where have you got this from right mm -hmm. so what i'll do is i will go to the covid 19 monitor or you know some sort of visualization monitor and i'll show you that in a second <clears throat> so let me i'll have to switch you or basically let me show the full screen because it will be easier yes so assuming this is the website from which i have taken the figures of 20 million right yeah and i've read this report because i'm doing a research on how was the airline industry affected because of covid 19 so i have to give some introduction about covid 19 pandemic and i've read this from this report right so if i download this report this is a report and this report somewhere says 20 20 million people have died now in order for me to make this bit credible i have to give referencing how would i do that so here in this case what i'm going to do is excuse me one second so here in this case how would you do the referencing because i want to make my report credible so first things first i go to references on the top and i there are lots of referencing system in the world we use harvard anglia in the uk i click on this system then i need to reference this because i am saying that this is accurate so what i will do is i will click on insert citation this will open up a pop up window and it will tell me what source am i using to quote this now this is a report right so instead of book section article journal i will choose report right and then i will fill this up so this is a report by for example who is who has published this particular report if i just magnify this and i go back so this is the link i need but i will go back in a second so this is a full report which obviously is a summary and i will okay here we go so this report has been published by gideon mendel gideon mendel so the author of this report is gideon mendel which is i've got here now what is the title of this report i need to open the report title of this report is welcome how covid 19 affected people's life this is the title yeah. who is the publisher gallup in which city it was published go back to the website and i'm going to look at which city so so it was published in uh, you know new york because it's a unicef report and in which year which was published so there will be an year also given march 2020 okay yes. now what i've done here is i have referenced this in terms of what i'm going to mention and as you can see it has put a reference here yes now this bit i have read a paragraph somewhere that there are so many deaths which have occurred and when i start quoting statistics that you know this worldwide there were more 6 in 10 deaths and all that stuff i need to be able to reference this data because what is the sanctity of this data you know 41% where am i getting these figures so i need to reference 
and that reference will come from by inserting a citation here. So again, going back to the citation, if I look at now in this detail, I will look at Melanie March, who's the author. And then the report title is this, it remains the same. Publisher is Gallup, City, New York, and year 2020, March 2020, for example. Right? And I click OK. You would see it puts, puts a, a you know, reference here. Now, this is to build credibility in my report in terms of the evidence that I'm putting together for the assignment. Okay, now that I've done this, if I keep continuing this process and I go back towards the end, and if I follow this as a rule, what I need to then do is just click this bit and it will bring my work automatically, alphabetically arranged with all the details that I've provided. Yeah. And that gives credibility to what you are compiling and evidencing in your report. Yes. Okay. Now, this is bibliography because I'm using writing in my own words. If I had cited this as work, then I need to give sources, work cited. Yes. And yes. I will change this to work cited. So it will bring all the sources. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Does it answer your question? No, no, it's okay because uh, this is bibliography, right? Uh, I'm writing by. But if I was using theory, I would use works cited. Because what I will do here is I will copy and paste something from the report as it is that I did. And I have to put this in inverted commas as, um, you know, so as per the Gallup report comma, inverted quotes, and then close this with inverted quotes. I've copied it as it is. And because I've referenced it, it will not be seen as plagiarism. So this is referencing inverted quotes, and this is paraphrasing, which is bibliography. Got it? Yes. This is bibliography uh, paraphrases. This is... Yeah. This will come in as bibliography because I've read something in the report and I've written it in my own words. Okay. And here, because I've copied it as it is, I have to put it in inverted quotes and this is referencing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, so what I would suggest in this case is that when you look at uh, Harvard referencing, maybe new to you, you might need to go in and look at this video and go and refresh Harvard referencing after our discussion on the induction. Okay. Okay. Now, one last thing which I would like to cover is what is called command verbs. Now, command verbs are essentially words which define what the task is asking you to do. And again, here, I would open maybe an assignment brief so that you are able to understand the difference if I know the meaning of the words then how easy is it going to be for me to be able to, uh, you know, do that assignment? Yes. So if I look at the assignment brief here, the task here in the assignment brief is asking me to say describe, right? Yeah. Now, let me do one thing. If I delete the word, you know, describe. Don't read this word. Don't read the word explain, suggest, consider, evaluate, explain. Now, if you read the task, it says the reward system in place in two organizations of your choice and compare them with motivational theories. So what do I need to do with the reward system? Do I need to explain it, describe it, define it, evaluate it, assess it? Because this word tells you what is required to be done in the task. That is why it is called a command verb. Is that okay? Yes. So this word, if you know the definition of it, now describe and explain have differences. Describe means I have to describe, means I have to write arguments as paragraphs. Explanation could be I could explain in two lines and then write two, three bullet points. And that would be acceptable. How would I know this? 
This I would know if I know the definition of these command verbs. So yes. this document in all the six units that you study, there are going to be 20, 24 different words which will come. And they are defined here. Now, if yes. you know the definition of these words, so if I say def describe, provide a detailed explanation on how and why things happen. And when I say explain, or if I say define, that is this. So if you know the meanings of these words, then you are able to compile the evidence in a much better way and provide the evidence in a more convincing manner. Then, and also you know how much is too much to write and how much is too less so that you are able to hit the criteria the first time you submit the assignment. Yes. So this is going to be a handy document for you to just read the definitions of these command verbs and they would be useful because it will allow you to understand how to write, how much to write, and in how much detail to write. Now, uh, when I but, talk about uh, examine... Uh, sorry, yeah. I have uh, one question here. Uh, sorry yes, to interrupt you. Hmm. Uh, here you just uh, give the definition of the word. word yes. uh, but uh, there is no uh, example for each uh, definition, like uh, for each uh, word, any to explain the words, what exactly this? So in, no, no, this is the exact definition of the word. Yes. So exam means when you go to a doctor, if he has to do examination, he will check and put the stethoscope, take your blood pressure. So here examination means look in close detail, establish key facts, important issues around uh, surrounding a topic. So if, a word, if you were to examine motivational theories, that means you will need to go into what is motivation, definition of it, then explain what is motivational theories, discuss key facts about motivation theories, Maslow's theory of motivation, Room's theory of motivation, because they were discovered in different decades, different centuries. And then you are going to discuss the topic, what is being asked to discuss around it. That means you have to joy, compare them to understand how they can be applied to different organizations. So here you need to give reasons and establish facts, how they are applied as motivation within the organization. So Maslow's theory is characteristic approach. So sometimes when you're in junior roles within the organization, HR gives incentives, like you will get a holiday trip or you will get a bonus. Yes. But if the same theory has to be applied to a senior person in somebody in middle management, they would give them maybe some sort of an award or a recognition letter. But at the top level, it could be uh, employee stock option plan or profitability percentage or something like that. So that is the application of theory you are explaining by examining this and that is why the definition is given here. Yeah. So example wise exactly I won't be able to tell you and that will come from when you look at a sample assignment to understand how much to write and because the sample assignment is being given we have looked at somebody's work who has actually done everything to the T. So he has made sure that he has followed the command verb. He has made sure the evidence is detailed. And that is why good samplers have been provided here. Yes. Is that okay? This yes. is something that we will come to when you come to start doing your first assignment. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for now, it is just a reading that you have to do to understand that these are command verbs that you need to be aware of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Thank Good you. stuff. So that brings us to the end of our discussion in terms of course enrollment. So we have covered everything that I wanted to take you through as an overview on the course. And you would have also received emails, you know, from my colleague with regards to the session invites for tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. So are there any questions uh, at least that you want to ask me immediately for the discussion that we've done? Yeah, actually, uh, I understand. understood your way of teaching is very good. I really appreciate and uh, most of uh, things I covered, but I will practice when uh, uh, it will be start happening 
so that will be more uh, comfortable for me for understanding then that time when uh, the lecture will be then i will be able to do a lot of questions and understandings uh, and uh, that will be a good uh, experience for me absolutely yes. so that's why the sessions yeah. uh, you know are done in order for you to yeah. you know be able to speak to the lecturer and also be able to you know um, ask queries or questions assignment wise you don't need to worry about that much simply because you need to go through the units first yeah. and at some stage when you have gone through the units what will be uh, then done is at the end of it we are going to uh, do an assignment discussion session and that assignment discussion session is going to take you through the first part of how things would be you know essentially done so don't mm -hmm. worry about the assignment part of it right now what you have to do is you have to essentially look at right now getting to grips with some of the things that you will be doing and encountering while studying the course with us yeah i want to say something about this uh, really um, uh, i want to share my feelings with you sure. uh, i know all the institutions and uh, a lot of uh, organizations and institutions uh, uh, but i'm really happy and uh, uh enjoying this one because uh, you you have uh, provide us a detailed information about this course and you know other uh, institutions and uh, like uh, colleges online colleges not not offering these things and this is the best point uh, any candidate can learn more and grow in this way so i'm very happy and i really appreciate this uh, uh, a deep explanation and uh, you know, with method of teaching uh, and uh, i hope uh, i will grow inshallah and uh, i will be a quick learner with the method i am fully satisfied that's that's perfect no problem with that and i really appreciate your feedback so what we are going to do is obviously today this session is a bit of a loaded session because there are lots of things and you yeah, yeah. used to some of the bits so i'll send you a copy of this recording after the session and then when you start joining the sessions you will also the first unit that we are going to teach you is going to help you pace up with the way we are going to teach and deliver the course and that will also help you adjust into a routine and then towards the end of it when the actual discussion on the assignment will happen for the first unit that is where i would suggest that some of these things that i have covered today will come in handy and you would be able to ask more meaningful questions okay okay boss okay good yeah. stuff so hopefully um, you know we will get to meet up during some of the sessions that i also will take in one or two of the units and at the same time what i'm going to also do is ensure that uh, you know when you are studying with us you're also learning and obviously a lot of soft skill development will happen uh, keeping in mind the use of it in some of the systems yeah. and obviously othm's assignment are very useful because they do not ask you to produce documents and pages and pages of document they actually yeah. break assignments up into very useful exercises presentations mind map case study reflective essay which are things actually we do on a day to day basis because if yeah. you are working in an organization your boss might say can you create minutes of the meeting or can you create this presentation or you can you summarize this report for me and those are the bits that you are going to see actually you know happening in the assignments as well no so, inshallah you uh, yeah. to study this course as well uh, to understand and make use of it from a point of view of output required uh, you know for the course yeah yeah sure and uh, now inshallah i will be uh, like uh, you are a regular student and uh, inshallah as soon as i will finish this course and uh, i will ask you to advise uh, for the progression and uh, i will keep in continuous uh, touch with you that's perfect no problem yeah thank you for joining the session group today so i'll uh, be in touch with you in the next coming days and then i will get